I'm uh, Lieutenant Brandon Watkins, B-R-A-N-D-O-N, W-A-T-K-I-N-S with the Homicide Unit. Uh, yesterday we had a couple of homicide units and a task force officer who were out here following up on some leads. They came across uh, what we believe to be a shallow grave. We called out uh, for the forensic anthropologist from the medical examiner's office to come out, confirm that it's uh, it was human remains. So today we're in the process of uh, process of excavating that that grave and uh, starting the process of identifying who might be in there don't know yet uh, they're we started about eight o'clock this morning and but they're just now getting to the part where they're they're doing the the digging so we'll wait to hear from the anthropologist to find out about that it's mostly underground right now so, um, you know, they've got a little bit of digging to do. What leads you to believe that this could possibly be connected with the missing woman? We're not sure yet. Uh, they were out here following up some leads that had to do with a missing person. But, again, this may or may not have anything to do with that. Which missing person case were they following up with? Uh, we're going to... The family... Uh, we're going to have to talk to the family about this. And I don't want to give the family either false hope or, or make them expect something. We, we need to wait uh, before we speculate on who it might be. What led you guys to begin the search in this area? It was just leads that we got through the course of an investigation. What time did you come out here yesterday? Yesterday? Um, I know I left here at about 6 or 6.30. I'm not sure what time we came out originally. In the morning or evening? No, at, in the evening. And we've had patrol officers who were sitting out here guarding the scene overnight. So, I mean, we've had a we've had a presence out here the entire time. Going back to the condition, can you tell if there are clothing? Again, it's it's mostly underground right now. So, um, I mean, this is going to be a slow, laborious process for our crime scene units and for the uh, medical examiner's office. So, it's it's going to be a very long time before we know the answers, probably that you're all looking for. Can you tell us why? We, it's a big area. We had some people yesterday, whenever we were out here, who were coming in from the uh, from the apartment complex. You know, they're trying to see what we're doing, and I understand that. So mostly, we're just trying to keep people out of the area and give. You know, we're we're dealing with human remains. We're trying to give as much dignity as possible uh, to whoever that might be. When you say shale or grave, how many feet are we talking? It's like I said, we can just see little bits of stuff, and so. It's not, you know, a normal six-foot grave. It's it's obviously something very shallow where you can get... There was enough there that it made us um, call the anthropologist. Any other evidence recovered from the... Uh, they're, they're in the process right now doing that. They, they're, they're using medical, metal, metal detectors and other things down there. So right now, I don't know what all we've gotten. Going back to her question, I mean, are we talking inches or... That I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's not very deep. That's all I can tell you. Area wise, I don't know. I mean, that's a that's a big area right there. I, I mean, acres. An approximation. Um, two or three football fields. Does that sound good? That's uh, yeah. You got that big area, and you got the big area back here. That's about that's about the best I can tell you. How were you able to locate the shallow grave? Did you have cadaver dogs out here? Or? No, uh, we had a an officer actually was just kind of walking the area out, getting a, a look at it, and kind of came across uh, came across what was found yesterday. And so from that point on, we started locking it down and and uh, you know start the start the process for the medical examiner. What alerted him to the shallow grave? Was it? Uh, article of clothing or something that caught his eye? Yeah, I don't want to go too much too deep into it right now. Um, but the officer who came out and saw it had a, had a very good eye and, and noticed something. And, and she, I, I can't thank her enough for finding what she found. She was just following up on tips on a missing person. Perhaps she was out here with the uh, homicide detectives following up the tips on the missing person. Do you think any recent weather, we've had a couple rainstorms, maybe it's a possibility it's it's a possibility right now i i don't have enough knowledge in that area uh, that's that's the uh medical examiner's forte uh, last night mayor was talking about we're on track for breaking our homicide record 
Well, let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, that's a record nobody wants to break, and uh, you know this would be, if the medical examiner rules this a homicide, it would be number 25. And yeah, that's a lot for this time of year, but we've also had periods where it got dramatically slow. So what's happened in the past is not necessarily indicative of what's gonna happen in the future. Have you been in contact with Tyler Whitaker's family? Uh, we have talked to a lot of different, I mean, again, speculating on whose body it might be is way preliminary right now. We're going to have to get this from the medical examiner, and I would hate to give somebody who is missing a loved one false hope that we have found their loved one. Uh, it's, right now, I don't want to cause anybody who's already suffering any more undue suffering. But have you talked to the family just to let them know, hey, we're sorry. Again, it would be... We've talked to several people, and it would it's a little bit early to be naming somebody. When is the body expected to be identified? That's up to the medical examiner. Uh, and, you know, once this, this process is going to take all day, this is, again, a very, very slow process. And once they get some kind of identification, they'll let us know. We'll obviously tell the family first, uh, but then we'll I'll put it on the portal. Now, also, I noticed the medical examiner who is flying his drone over the area. Obviously, he's collecting evidence. Uh, what additional purpose um, was he using the drones for? I would have to ask the, the medical examiner. They they use the drones to map stuff out. Um, and I can only assume that that's what's happening. Lieutenant, there's a chance that this isn't a missing person. This could be a new house. Absolutely. So we don't know what we have right now. This could be a holy separate thing so um you know it's it's that's why i'm saying it's very very early to speculate on who it might be so finding the body like this how does that differ than you know your typical homicide call um well yeah normally it's usually something it's usually something that's just happened as the typical homicide call you know people have heard gunshots you know bodies found this you, normally you don't have homicide detectives out in the scene whenever a a body is found like this so uh it has yeah it's a little bit different than what we normally deal with but again it's what we do so you did have homicide detectives out here yesterday yes. following up on tips correct okay i uh, wanted to ask you for those of us not familiar with forensic is it anthropology yes what does this process entail as far as what they're out here doing i see men in white suits <laughs> anytime uh, yeah they're they're wearing the marshmallow suits right now in order to not contaminate the scene any more than they can and also to protect themselves uh, you know anytime you start dealing with the body you're dealing with biohazards and um, they're they're protecting themselves and protecting the scene for our audience could you describe the area this is rather hidden and tucked away can you describe the area that this was found in? yeah i believe this is a wastewater or stormwater facility for the city of Tulsa. This area right here is city of Tulsa property. That area back there is private property. Um, it's a pond, a uh, little creek that runs into the pond, um, and we're kind of back here behind a, an apartment complex. Has the owner of the private property been notified? Yes, we've talked to him. We, we had to get permission to search the land first, so we dealt with that yesterday. It seems really obvious. I know you have to wait for the medical examiner if they will in contact, but yeah, I mean, anytime you find a body in a grave, you can assume it didn't just you accidentally land there. Now, so, will you guys be interviewing or um, asking any information from the residents that are nearby? Yeah, we started that process yesterday. Obviously, we're looking for cameras and anybody who might have any kind of information, anybody who might have seen someone down here, you know, that normally isn't down here. That's something that, that we need to know. We good? Who are you joined with, Lieutenant? Do what? Who do you have behind you? Sir? Oh, I've, I've got Deputy Chief Larson and Captain Williams, who's part of our uh, detective division. And this is my boss making sure I don't do something mm -hmm. stupid. Okay. I'd like to comment real quick on your question sure. of what the mayor said about the homicide rate. Can you rate? come on over yeah. a little bit? Sure. Um, well, first off, understand that I'm extremely proud of Lieutenant uh, Watkins and the men and women of the Tulsa Police Department Homicide Unit, mainly because we have consistently, and I think when you do something for more than a decade, that's pretty consistent. We solve over 90% of our homicides almost every year, sometimes in the mid 90% range. So I can tell you, uh, at my position, traveling and interacting with other major city chiefs, 
that's extraordinary. We've had other major cities come to us to say, how do you all work your cases? I'm confident uh, that the evidence that they're uncovering back here, that once they have all of that and the ME re releases the results to them, they will solve this. That's just how good they are. So I'd like to send that message out that yes, we may be on a record pace right now, but Lieutenant Watkins extremely accurate when we've seen, we've gone three, four, five, six weeks and not had one homicide. We would love that because uh, our unit right now is taxed as far as manpower, but the citizens should know there's no better unit in the United States than these guys. They will solve this. Uh, and we'll get it, you know, we'll come to you all and tell you when we know what we've got exactly. And if we identify the body, you all will be the, probably the second people to know after we know. And then we'll let these guys do what they do best. Just for the record, can you give us your rank and spell your name? Sure, please? Deputy Chief Dennis Larson. I am over the Investigative Bureau. And this is Captain Malcolm Williams. And he is the immediate supervisor of the uh, homicide unit. And I'm sorry, my last name is spelled L-A-R-S-E-N. Uh, the, uh, so you've kind of got the chain of command for the homicide unit, and we're, we're both involved in it every day, and we go down and get briefed about active cases that are ongoing, and uh, I think this is uh, just the beginning of solving this mystery, but uh, I think in the next few weeks we'll come back with you with good news. Thank you, Chief. Uh-huh. We good? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All righty. Thanks. Oh. You want a profile? I'll profile.